Okay. Uh, sorry? Oh, no. uh, the reason why I ask is that uh, I am a food hacker. I'm a member of a uh, hackerspace which is called Noisebridge, which is one of the, I would say, top uh, hackerspaces around the world, at least considering the size of the members and also of the place. Uh, anyway, can I have a slide? Today's presentation is about food hacking. Uh, I'll explain what is it, why I think it's important, its connection to the hacker movement, and also to the wider society. Because as you have realized, I'm sure our society are not just hackers. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so I describe food hacking quite simply. Don't say what is it. Uh, you are you know what you are doing. That means that uh, you do understand the principles of your work, uh, of course the basis, and also you have an idea of where you go. I will have examples later on, so you know, I will make it more exact. But, you know, the same as kind of you know, programmers, you know. You know what you do. You are improving. That means that you are trying to create, develop something new, what is good, working, Fun. It's hacking, after all. Uh, of course, uh, I do believe that there is a change of paradigm. All the proprietary soft software and you know patenting and so on, we did <coughs> up to now, is starting to be pushed on the side by a new wave. That's the open source. Lots of people are thinking about open source as free something. It's not. There's enormous amount of energy time and ed uh, dedication from the society, hacker community in this case, and something new is coming. Something that's open to everyone, not just to use, but to contribute and to improve. This is amazing. And I, as a food hacker, I would like to support it in my way. But don't expect me to, to write some application or whatever. That's not my case, right? Uh, combination, traditional knowledge with today's scientific understanding and current technology. That's how I describe it in a simple way. Basically, you, many times, you take things which are here already for thousands of years. In my case, fermentation especially. You combine it with what we know now about science, all that kind of you know, DNA and you know, you know, plasmid, whatever, and you use the technology which we have now to improve it, to uh, do it in a more easy, fun way and have better results. Next slide, please. Very simple example, for example, yogurt. I'm sure that you know yogurt culture. Uh, many of you are buying live yogurt in Brazil. If you want to make your own yogurt, it's very simple. You make, you buy a yogurt, if you don't have your own, which is a lie. And after that, you'll think about what is actually in the yogurt. Well, simple, milk and some live bacteria which are changing to milk, which is liquid, into something else, which is firm, fine, basic, nice. If you want to have it in detail, you know that the bacteria is eating lactic sugar. Simple. Now, you will think, okay, I know the basis, you know, I eat milk, something what is edible for the organism. You will think about what is the milk kind of, you know. Is it good to go to the shop, which I have realized here in I'm sorry, I haven't seen in Bratislava, I've been in several shops, you know, shopping, I haven't seen a single milk which was not ultra pasteurized, which is horrible from my point of view. I'm sure they are around, but I hope not bad. So, for example, you will buy a milk which is pasteurized or it's from the cow, which is the best, you know, kind of. No killing of anything. Not really. And <laughs> you will get the milk, you know, let's say, which is from the cows which are on the green pastures. Even better. You know the results, if you separate and compare it, you make a yogurt from ultra pasteurized milk on one side, and you make a yogurt from free ranch, you know, cows, you know, which are organic. Very big difference in taste. Yeah, so, okay. Tasting a healthy way of uh, preparation. You also think how you work with your things. Uh, also, the yogurt, you know, it's a life culture which is improving your digestion. Which means that you know you can digest more. 
your movement of your intestinal whatever apparatus is you know more easy you know and uh, it's uh, kind of you know you are right you can work you can have fun you know in a more easy way you know uh, I don't know is here someone who is you know involved in a slow food movement and really you know healthy food you know I always paying attention to that no there's no movement but maybe there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know like, but, uh, whatever so kind of this is basically what I'm trying to promote, you know, by this, because live food within the slow food movement, which is opposition to the fast food, McDonald's and so on, it's really important and can prolong, I do believe, a life of usual human beings by many, many years, if it's used properly. You know, beautiful example is, for example, Japan. You know, you can see it there. And I'm going there very soon, so whatever. Okay, uh, also the last point, preservation. Uh, many times if you don't have, uh, for example, in third world countries, a way how to put your food to the freezer or to the fridge, it will go bad within hours or a day or two, no problem. It's kind of really warm, you know, beautiful for the spoilage. If you add some good cultures which are provided for you, you will preserve it many times for days or even weeks and you don't have a problem you know for example yogurt culture in milk it will be more and more sour but you can eat it and you will get still the nutrition so if you are you know kind of out of electricity whatever this is a way how to preserve not just you know yogurt or fruit you know or meat you know sauerkraut whatever yeah so that's the way next one please So up to now, you know, I will just spoke mostly a little bit about the fermentations. Here, it's the other part. Because I'm biotechnologist and I do fermentations and I like it, I have realized that uh, the setup for my cultures and experiments uh, is not the best. If you, for example, would like to have a yogurt culture, you can use a stable condition of temperature, that's fine. But if you would like to, for example, have a kombucha, uh, does somebody know who, what kombucha is? Kombucha? Yeah. Kombucha, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you know already. It's a probiotic drink of bacteria and yeast. It's a special culture, which is a nice mother kind of cellulose floating on the top of the, your sugar, sorry, your tea and sugar solution. If you have your culture on a set up temperature, for example 25 degrees, which you can set up by a calorie heater or whatever, within a few months the culture will go down. It will basically start to fall apart, the taste will go bad, whatever. It's a problem of many industrial applications. Why? Well, because of the uh, In this case, it'll be different. You have 15, for example, microorganisms, bacteria and yeast, all of them has different temperature, optima. Which means one is 20 degrees, that's best for them. Under is 25, 40, 50. If you make 25 as the set, sooner or later the rest will basically die out and just few organisms will prevail. This is something, what, for example, I have realized people in an industrial application are not very much, think, uh, no, they don't realize this problem because it's something new. Probiotic drinks are something new and because I don't have, you know, kind of setup which I would like to, I started to build up experimental incubator, which is going to oscillate the temperature as I like. So of course, involvement, you know, in the in the minute, you know, you have the Arduino so microprocessors. <laughs> you need someone who is going to program it. You know, you need the heat sort, you know, the heat source. So you need someone who is kind of going to tell you, okay, is it better to heat up your box, you know, with the uh, air or with the water or you know, infrared, you know. And you go, you have to program it, you know, you know, big job, project. And that's exactly what the food hacking is about. Because it's as the other types of people coming together, doing a new things, you know, and doing it in a cool way. Nice and simple. Now, just uh, uh, the word of micro, yeah. I would like to have <coughs> more pictures of electron scanning microscopy, for example, you know, some of them are beautiful, you know. And of course, you know, microscopes, so you know, that's something that I would like to play with. For example, at Noisbridge, before I left, somebody got broken electron scan scanning microscope for the place, and within two months they repaired it, so now they can do electron scanning microscopy, you know, which is, I think, just great, you know, you know. Things like that, you know, it's just amazing, you know. And of course, you know, what I do, I always want to have it in the open source mode, so you can really 
share it and you can by contribution improve it because you know I cannot do everything by myself you know it's really important to get people involved and have a chance for them you know give them a chance to use it can I next one okay now what I do uh, I'm here because I just started a tour around Europe I'm visiting uh, different hackerspaces and I'm trying to support the food hacking movement within the place and the community. So in a simple way, uh, I believe that the communities, all the communities of the people, uh, should share something. And now, for example, I think that sharing the food and uh, the preparation of food and eating the food, it's a wonderful way how to build up and connect and sometimes reconnect the communities. We tried it for six months in uh, Noise Bridge in San Francisco. So you have, for example, on Tuesday we have a member meeting. So at eight, there's a meeting. At five, we came together as a food hackers and we would be preparing five, six different meals, you know, vegan, you know, carnival, whatever. We will serve it to the people. We will get back the resources for the event, you know, for the spendings. And yeah, we had a great time, you know, we have fun, you know, we enjoy it, you know. And we learn, of course, you know, and reconnect the community. It's a really important and I think it's a really good thing to do. So I would certainly re recommend, you know, to do something like this here too in the future. Now, uh, I'm specializing on fermentations. So for me, especially, you know, the kombucha drinks, you know, fermentation of the honey, you know, sauerkraut, you know, all these things, yogurts, you know, it's great. So live foods, you know, and really kind of working with the nature and uh, to get something of it, you know, which I like, you know, the food, you know, the taste, you know, which does me well, it's great. I really enjoy it and I do believe that actually the food hacking can help people which are many times a tech, you know, because most of you are real tech, you know, to reconnect, you know, with the nature. Because, you know, you play with it, it's something like a planet, you know. You play with it every day or two, you know, and you see it and it's kind of, it grounds you. So if you don't go, you know, for your natural walks, you know, you can have your kombucha or your yogurt, you know, and it's kind of helping, you know, to get more in balance, that you are completely floating here in your head, you know, and you are more, you know, you know it's important sometimes you have to realize that you are in a reality, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, now, this tour will be taking around two months, you know, it will be started now, you know, and it will be going through March and April. And after that, <coughs> I plan to go to Japan, where I would like to learn more. I will be there for the beginning for three months. <coughs> Returning for the CCC camp in Berlin, where I would like to do a lot of food hacking, and I hope really to get a nice bay of food <coughs> or whatever, you know, the food hackers together, and play with, you know, all these things, you know. And after that, I will be returning to Japan. <laughs> That's at least the plan for now. Can I have the next one? Done. Now just a simple example. Uh, this is a logo of Noise Bridge, which you cannot see because it's quite, well, you may, maybe it's quite dark here. This is a really cool spot. Can I have the next slide? How many of you have been in the United States? The California didn't fly very much, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I certainly recommend. I don't agree with the American foreign policy, whatever, not at all. But this is cool. Uh, California is here. For the ones of you, here is the map. Uh, Los Angeles, you know, Hollywood, whatever is here. I have to be just passing. It's I don't like it at all. Here's San Francisco. San Francisco is around 600, I think, uh, 600,000 people. How are the conversation with, for example, Berkeley, which I'm sure that you know, which is one of the best university cities, it's around four or five million. So it's quite big. I would describe it as one of the one of the cultural hubs of the world. It's boiling there. If you want to do something, if you want to get something new, you know, kind of, you know, inspiration or put something there, you know, kind of take your energy and do it, this is a wonderful spot. And this is exactly what I love so much on Noise Bridge. Next one. And this is the explanation. What is the hackerspace? For me, there are several things which are very important about hackerspaces. I describe it as an open platform. That means that you came here, probably uh, in a few weeks or months, and you will have what already Noise Bridge has. 
And I'll describe Noisville because this is what I have been living in for five, six months, you know, quite often, you know, every maybe four or five days per week I have been there. <coughs> you know, you come in, nobody cares, you know, kind of, you just, you know, open the door, you know, by the buzzer, you know, you get into the first floor and you have a big <coughs> space of 3,500 square, square feet, which is, I don't know, like big. You have electronic lab, so you can do all the soldering, uh, paint, you know, constant, you know, measuring the potentials, whatever, whatever with electronics basically you want. Of course, a lot of crap which you can use <coughs> and not to buy. You will have, uh, of course, some uh, nice, uh, how you call it, hardware workshops. So meaning, you know, you can do anything what you want with the wood, with the, the metal. You will have, of course, the scanning electron microscope if you like, you know. You will have a kitchen, you will have a classes or classrooms where you can take classes. Of course, there is you know connection to the internet, you know, so you can play and you can work with the people you know on the projects, memberships, you know, big place, lots of happening, and lots of potential to work. If you want to do something, you can come and you can use all these resources, basically for free. So you can do things which would cost you thousands of dollars to put together. You can do it by yourself for a few hundreds, for example, which is really important. So I call it incubator. Because you are there and you are doing something new, there are lots of companies which came out from that and created something new, started as a business, and people are living from it. However, this all is not possible without this. This is brands. The biggest thing about places like this are the people. There are people who are professionals. Many of them are top in the field around the world. They are there and they are ready and they are actually looking forward to meet people who are who are doing something and they want to help them. Because you know, they like to do new things, they like to hack, you know, they like to play, you know. If you come there and you have your torch, your project, which you have to hold because you know nobody is going to do it for you, and you know, if you don't have a direction and you know kind of your plan, you'll just get blown away in discussions and you know playing around with the things. But if you want to do something and you're going after that. It's incredible potential. I, it's for me. It's kind of like a university connected, you know, to the really a workshop. You know, you can basically do any, anything what you want. It's <coughs> incredible, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy that these places are appearing around the world, allowing people to kind of do their <coughs> things in their way, which is really great. Now, hacker community. I am describing hackers something like a. A mix of uh, really crazy scientists and very extrava extravagant, you know, artists. It's something, you know, between, you know, you know, and it's hard to really kind of get it because each hacker is very different, which I like a lot, you know. And again, it's a community <coughs> power. You have artists there who are really, you know, you know one of my friends who were cooking with me were, uh, was a professional player of the yo-yo. Perfect. You know, and the other one was a graphic you know, engineer, you know, you know a bitch out, but whatever, you know, the electronics. It was just so many different people together doing the great things that it's really very, very... There's a lot of potential in it. That's maybe how I would describe it. Now, I will go a little bit faster. How much time do I have? Can I just ask you? <coughs> 20 minutes. 20 minutes, five minutes to go? Yeah, that's beautiful. I would like to have 10 for discussion, so I'll be a bit faster. Look. Here is just you know to see it. Uh, this is basically maybe a one half, one quarter of the average, <coughs> not even that. You know, it's really big hall. You know, very basically whatever you want. This is just you know the beginning of build up of the kitchen. Here you can see me. Uh, it was nice and warm there, so you know in my apron. We are just tasting uh, drinks. So for for example, you know I don't know what you are going to do here, but every month Noise Bridge has a very nice <coughs> event which is called Five Minutes of Fame. Uh, that even is uh, quite nice and simple. You have 10 presentations on whatever basically you want, <coughs> five minutes each, and you just give it all. I had presentation about my project in Cuba, the Multimedia Center, you know, my projects, you know, you know, helping in Mexico, you know, whatever fermentations. Another guy had, you know, uh, how do you call it? Uh, the difference in a graphic art, graffiti, in the girls' and boys' toilets in San Francisco. <laughs> you know, you know, etc., etc. Of course, you know, really security hacking, you know, you know, quite often on the play. But, you know, 
You can sign in, you can present, and you know, because it's happening already for nearly two years, there will be at least 100 people who are sitting there and listening. And some of them contribute by their energy and time, some by money, some reconnect you with someone else, and it goes. And for this event, which is here, you know, described basically, I, for example, did always food and drinks. So, people were there, they could come, you know, be fat, you know, they have seen the food hacking, and support came, you know. We always paid for the budget, you know, we get some money more, and we could experiment for free. Because my philosophy in this kind of communities is that if you do something like, you know, preparing food and drinks for the people, you should at least, uh, you shouldn't pay for the expenses, I believe. Because, you know, people are going to eat it, they are going to drink it, you know. So you invest your energy, you invest your time, but the resources should be put together by the community because, you know, sooner or later <coughs> you cannot make it. It's just, you know, kind of fit for the people, you know, for example, you know, a hundred, you know, you don't have the budget for it most of the time, you know. So if I can make one. Here, it's example of what we have been doing really in practice. Uh, we had a courses of uh, courses of uh, probiotic drinks preparations. That's what I did every Wednesday. Sometimes, you know, from let's say from six o'clock to nine. <coughs> Most of the time, we would be finished around you know 10, 11, Sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning, you know. But it was fun. We did different, you know, kombucha, kvass, you know, whatever, you know, lots of different things every week. So people would come and they could experiment. Now. Preparation of food and drinks for events, that's what we did, you know, for the noise <laughs> and also for, and it's not written here, for the public, or oh, maybe then, there, uh, for the public, you can see it here, this is actually a special event, it's called Underground Market, it's a new thing in San Francisco, you can go <coughs> to a place where you sell your thing and you don't need any paperwork, because people who came to buy, they sign that, you know, if something happens, it's their problem. So you can just, you know, try basically, yeah, it just, you can try the setup of your, okay, I would like to, for example, you know, I don't know, prepare sausages. Are they selling drugs? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know. But actually, you don't need it because, you know, you get your card and, well, concerning marijuana, you get your card and you can get easily, you know, kind of access to the marijuana. I mean, stuff. Uh, no, 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 I don't know about that, you know. <laughs> I experiment not so far yet. Yeah. Maybe here, you know, kind of during the last few days. No, so <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you go there and you can you can try, you know, you produce your product, you bring it to the market, you market it, and after that you see actually what happens. Do I like it? I don't. You know, if you wouldn't do it on a usual kind of market, you would have to invest thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars before you could even try it. Here, you can do it for free. Well, free, you know, you pay $50 you know, admission for the market, and that's it. You know, ingredients. And your time, of course, energy. That, great, I think. So we have people, of course, presenting noise bridge and food hacking on this event, getting new, you know, people in, you know, and it worked, you know, kind of, you know, people are coming, you know, nice. Shall I? Yep. Now, this is a small example of a drink, which I wanted to prepare here, but I don't know, because I was uh, a bit uh, late with the shopping, I will do it a bit later on. Uh, food and cake, honey cooler. Honey cooler is a drink which I developed in San Francisco and uh, I put it also on the market in one uh, very nice project which is called Tree Stone Hard Kitchen, specializing in preparation of organic, high quality food from the best ingredients from the area, if possible. You can see the honey cooler here. This is already with the sediment. Uh, it's very simple drink. You get your jar, which is around four or five liters, and you dissolve the honey in a warm water, not too hot. The honey is around 400, 500 milliliters or grams, more or less. You add a bit of a yogurt, live culture, and water. You put the top on, you let it for five days to ferment on room temperature, always releasing the pressure, and after that, you just put it in the bottles like this, you close it, you leave it on the <coughs> kitchen counter for only one or two days. That's called secondary fermentation. That will get you the bubbles. And you put it in the fridge and you are done. You have a wonderful probiotic drink. If you like to play with it more, you can put there ginger extracts, you know, or, you know, hibiscus, you know, infusion, whatever. 
A really nice and simple way how to do very delicious drink. Of course, here we have kombucha. That's you know very popular drink now, uh, which is eating basically just symbiotic culture of uh, yeast and bacteria, eating a black tea with sugar. Like also simple. One week fermentation, we have the drink too. So it's just you know small example, you know kind of what we have been doing quite on a regular basis, you know, and what I do actually a lot around the world because I'm specializing in the drinks. And I'm really sorry that I don't have the drinks here. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to ferment it because you know, it takes some time around, you know, at least four days. So not this time, hopefully next time. Can I next one? Now, these two, uh, these slides are quite fast. Uh, I wonder, and I'm quite new, you know, in the hacking you know, field. I'm kind of in the touch with the hacking community for a year and a half, something like that. What is happening? Hacker movement is here for decades. Uh, in the last two years, the increase of the creation of hacker spaces, which is basically the fundamental center of the hackers, has just you know went gaga. It went exponentially, I would say probably you know you know it's happening all around the world you know, and people are realizing, especially the ones who are in the field for a long time, and they are asking what is going on, why now, why not ten years ago. I do believe that we are approaching really kind of, you know, the big changes and this is one of the reactions. But just, you know, mention that this is really happening, this is getting momentum. New wave. I do believe that, you know, as the hippies were in the 60s, and let's say beginning of 70s, the hackers are, in a way, a new movement. There are loads of great ideas which haven't been here before, or they have been here, but they are not applied in a mass scale. Now it's happening. Internet, World Wide Web, open source. It's really happening. You know, we can see it. You know, the population is enormous. Where is it going to you know, kind of lead? That's a question. We will see about that. How to write it? That's kind of my question. You know, I like the movement. I like the people. I would like to certainly contribute and do my stuff. And now I'm kind of answering, you know, thinking, how can I do what I like in my life and be able to pay my bills, as you say. Next slide, please. My answer was food hacking tour. Let's go around Europe for the beginning and Japan and to see what are really the hacker spaces around Europe, because it's quite different, I can say, compared to the United States, what I have seen up to now, and learn more what they are doing. I started here, as you can see. And I will continue <laughs> uh, next time to Prague. Uh, Brmlab will be, uh, I will have a presentation of work <coughs> there, and there will be fermented drinks there between 2nd and 4th of uh, March. After that, I will be taking basically Germany, so Berlin, Hamburg, here probably, Brussels, you know, and so on, you know, kind of Holland, uh, Belgium, probably Paris, and later on Ireland. So I will go around. I would like to do presentations, workshops, and some parties. And I do hope that at least I will be able to cover basic expenses for this trip uh, from these activities. So, of course, you know, I should mention, and we'll be at the, uh, at the end, what I'm now trying is kind of switch from kind of, you know, working and getting the pay on my hand. I'm starting to be uh, self employed. So I'm looking for the way how I can do what I want and be able to live from that. Can I make one? So this is the last slide. And after that, if you have a bit of time, I would like to open discussion. I would like to thanks a lot to this place and give me the opportunity to present myself. You have already uh, tasted some of my products and products of many other people who have been contributing by great deal to this to happen. And of course, you have enjoyed this organization that you know this is happening here. Build out the space, you know, you know, kind of you know, presentations, you know, kind of going on, you know, and so on. For me, I would like to thank a lot to everyone who came and who is going to party. I hope you know at least as much as is today. Uh, whoever would like to know more about me and my activities, you can check my page. I have some business cards, but you know I can always you know give you the link. You know. And of course, you know on the web page of the progress bar, there are links on my web pages. 
And this is also the way how most of the time I receive donations. So there's a just a donation button on my web page. And I have realized that in the long term, it's starting to look that it works. So I hope that uh, many of you will enjoy this evening. And for now, I'd like to have uh, how many minutes we have? Uh, 10 minutes 15? Yeah. So maybe 10 minute discussion and after the break. So I would like to open discussion, just ask me if I know I'll answer, if I don't, you know, well, next time. Okay? Uh, firstly, uh, firstly, I would like to say that uh, Frantishek is uh, the main responsible for uh, Catherine for this. Can you turn on the light now? Because uh, we don't... Mm -hmm. And you got the light now? The faces. Light. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, Franciszek is uh, main responsible for uh, uh, capturing uh, for this event. Uh, he prepared and is still preparing and a lot of uh, delicious food you, you should definitely try. Uh, uh, we we have all you can eat bar, such as donation is uh, five euro and more <laughs> if you want. So definitely try it. It's really delicious food. I think it deserves applause. <laughs> well, um, hey, um, great presentation. Thank you for the um, I have read recently, um, I think end of last year, that actually in California there's some sort of um, backlash happening to the to these underground markets because they often sell foods that you are not allowed to sell in stores in the US like raw milk and for some some fermented products. Yep. Um, can you quickly I, talk yeah. on this? Uh, let's say, uh, you know, in this community I call myself food hacker. Uh, it has uh, different reasons. However, basically in other communities I am biotechnologist or more Ferment, right? Ferment, brewmaster, you know, working with uh, these organisms, you know. So nice and easy, nothing with uh, biotech things and whatever it is. We don't have a want to have a problem problems on the United uh, States uh, immigration, right? Uh, what's happening? I know that in the San Francisco Bay Area, they started around a year and something ago, the way that the underground markets, both in San Francisco and in Oakland, which is our town there. After two markets, I think that basically they had got into troubles and they had to close for a few months. After that, they reopened and to my knowledge, for the last eight months, at least more than ten, I would say, they are open every month at least once or twice in different areas and it works quite pretty well. So they are able to go around. The problem <coughs> is that you can see in the United States, their foreign policy sucks. The reasons for that is not that Americans want to innovate and you know, destroy the other world, you know. The problem is that the corporation, the neoliberal you know, model, really took over the United States. You can see it now basically coming to Europe, especially to the United Kingdom and Ireland, you know, hitting the continent to Europe with all the kind of, you know, how you call it, the trade unions being crashed, you know, you know, you know, no kind of sick lease, you know, you know less rights for the workers, all these things, that's coming from the United States. And it's not that they want it. The problem is that the people in the United States lost the power to decide nearly anything. They don't have the power. You know, the power is in the hands of few corporations, which are now nationwide, before they were destroying the rest of the world, or destroying, getting the resources, you know, being on, how you call it, profit. Now they turn from the rest of the world and they start to do the same in the United States. That at least what I have seen, what I have kind of discovered and what I have felt. And uh, if you want to, you know, don't forget, you know, that this movement as a hackers and also the people, you know, who are doing the, their food at home, you know, it's exactly against this movement. <coughs> Because, you know, they want to separate people to get more cash, you know, that you don't cooperate, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, yeah, I have been surprised. They prohibited a raw milk in, in California. And I, re I have read, you know, the email of the lady who was arguing to Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor, in the time, asking, you know, come on, you know, you have drawing the milk all the time, but you're doing bully building, whatever. Why we cannot have it if we want to? So, no, they have to sell the milk as milk for the animals. That's how you buy the milk there, you know. 
So there are lots of crashes, you know, for example, Kambuja, which is quite big there, was okay. prohibited. What oh, prohibited. They took it out from the markets for several months because there was a alcohol content in the drinks, which was higher than, let's say, I think 1.5 percentage. Big boom, big hit for the producers, you know. Okay, later on they apply new technology, whatever. It's just kind of, I would like to say that there are lots of crashes because there's quite strong movement, especially around San Francisco area, which is trying to kind of push the things towards a good food in a healthy way and the corporations. So, yeah? Yeah, uh, when these people actually say software people, when uh, yeah. in software, so the someone is writing the software and so there is a the kind of peer review that people actually become actually sure of the quality of the software, what is the best, you know, of course, I mean, someone is like choosing it, maybe it's not the best. But there are any single in this market to say that there is an appear actually saying that because if, if you go and buy my food from the shop, so there is an inspector actually that state that maybe it's not good, yeah, mm -hmm. but still, you know, the, check the quality of food. But where in this they market? Don't in the US. Yeah. It doesn't work in the US. US doesn't work, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, it doesn't work, it's interesting. But it's still, I mean, there is a kind of peer actually kind of say, evaluation of food that is no, healthy food, food, good food, food, food. Of course, actually customers, they come and they know that what food they're buying. But still, I mean, is there a kind of honest, you know, in the underground markets, uh, if I, you know, this kind of my experience, <coughs> we brew the drinks, we did, you know, kombuchas, honey coolers, you know, and different you know, some food. We brought it there and we sell it. Basically for donations, we didn't resell it, we just asked for oh, serious okay. donations. And nobody asked kind of special questions, you know, concerning the, you yeah. know, the organization, you know, nobody kind of wanted to know exactly the percentage of the sugars, whatever. So basically, in this way, you, uh, how you call it? It's your name which is behind. Okay, there is trust there. Yes, exactly. You know, and, uh, Many people are trying to start it, and so they take it seriously, but if you mean, you know, some really kind of, you know, procedure of getting the things, you know, straight, you know, and exact, you know, no. Not to my knowledge, and I don't really think so. It's more kind of, you know, realize they will tell you what is in the food, you know, and, you know, of course, by the name, they basically try, you know, say, okay, it's all right for you to eat it. That's all I would say. Thanks, one. If there is some question. Yeah? Yeah, concerning me. Kombucha. Have you ever tried mixing it with alcohol? With alcohol? Yes. I did. No, yeah, of course I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's, you know, not with the, well, actually, yeah, also, okay, whatever. Uh, when I was in Mexico, and it's actually a good one. I will ask also that one, uh, the, 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 uh, this is a really cool one, because, you know, just to put a finger on, you know, when I was in Mexico, I was in a house of eight people, foreigners, you know, Italian, you know, French, whatever. We have been doing a uh, volunteering service. It was in San Cristobal de las Casas with Zapatistas, basically. Do you know Zapatistas uh, and Chiapas? Yeah, yeah. you have no idea. Yeah, basically, they are, you know, indigenous people fighting around against the Mexican Federation. You know, they want their own place and their life. Every two, three, once in three, four weeks, each of these people living with me, foreigners, were really sick because of diarrhea and you know, you know, kind of really problem with the stomach and with digestion. For three, four days, no problem. Antibiotics, not every can imagine. Hard. I haven't been sick a single time. Why? Because every day I ate my yogurt, I drank my kombucha and you know, water key through ferments. I intoxicated myself every day with the probiotic bacteria and yeast, which are in my system. So if I went for a market, and I, for example, bought the fruit, you know, there, you know, I didn't even wash it sometimes. They, they were, my friends, they were taking the fruit, everything, they were doing all the sanitation procedures. They, was, they were drinking just, you know, sanitized water from the shop. I drank from the water bag. I don't care, you know, nothing. What we did, for example, and the tools that I started to do for them, you know, uh, that we did uh, also to these fruities, which I will do today, which means you buy the fruit, you know, some juice, you know, some alcohol rum in this case, you know, for example, a cream, and you mix it together in the mixer, and after they drink it. And in this case, I started to use the ferments, the live yogurts and the kombucha to put it in, because I realized that it's not going to, you know, create a problem to them, 
and uh, it was tasty. So I use it in this way. If you mean you're mixing vodka and kombucha one to one, I didn't try that one yet. You have to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Actually, I may have kombucha. We can discuss it later on. We have vodka for sure. Uh, do, and do you have a scoby? I do have scoby here, share? and I can share it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, just, just one thing. Uh, uh, may I, just before you, can I? Yeah, sorry, it was given by Heidi. Yes, problem. Problem. You provide, you provide on your own research. Look, I have. Yes, because I have been active in the bridge, which has a web pages. Noise bridge as a hackerspace, of course, a big web pages. There we have a taste bridge, and there are recipes, manuals, you know, uh, how we do the drinks. Not all of them, but most of them. I'm updating my ones too, but from my web pages, I'm quite sure. Yeah, I have the link to the taste bridge pages, so you can check it out, or you can write me, and it'll be there. Soon, I will actually get the recipes also to my own personal page, so it will be there. Also, in the presentation, you have Sorry, uh, do uh, in the for the ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to describe, for example, when I have the ingredients, you know, also the company which is providing it. So I kind of describe really what do you use because sometimes the effect can be quite big, you know. It's kind of important part. So yeah, if you can discuss it later on, I can give you the links. Yeah. This? Yeah, I just wanted to switch it into a local context and would be interested in what's like in Czech Republic. Like, is there all the people, or some people who are involved in whatever slow food movement or your way of food hacking? Is yeah. there any, any networks or that you get them connected? Yeah, yeah, look, you know, this is what I'm trying to basically create mm -hmm. and reconnect. And I realize there are people, uh, do you know kimchi? Kimchi. Yeah. Kimchi is uh, basically a sauerkraut, but you know, from Asia, from Korea, a bit different with spices and They're really nice. There are lots of people doing this. There are lots of people doing this in Czech Republic, but you know, there are also people doing kombucha and whatever. But exactly, this is the problem. They are not connected. Most of them. So I have raised actually one point, and this is why I'm so happy that the hackers are just are giving, you know, having the really uh, the moment. You, if you want to do things like that, you, you know, food hacking, fermentations, you should have place for yourself where you can do it. And where you can meet with other people, you can do the workshop, you know, you can prepare the drinks, you harvest in a week time, you drink it, whatever. Something like a hacker space. Because if you don't have it, and I have experienced this in Mexico, it just doesn't really work. You, know, you can meet, you know, in the house of your friend and somewhere there, but it just doesn't kind of fly. At least that's my experience. It's really important to set up a location, which is quite safe, where you have, for example, refrigeration, you know, some, you know, things, whatever, where you can do the thing. So this kind of, you know, movement, to be really successful, it needs centers. And I do believe that to have, be connected to the hacker centers can be very uh, profitable for all, for the food hackers and also for the people. So, you know, that's kind of my idea. Other question, or are we finishing discussion and going to take something? Maybe. <laughs> yeah? Everything? Okay, guys, so enjoy the evening. Uh, I will be next door. We will be doing a bit more cooking and some alcoholic beverages. Maybe smoking <laughs> later on, we will see. And <laughs> yes. uh, it was great to see you here all. And I'll be just running with the computer, and I hope that you enjoy the next presentations. Yeah?